drops of marble from the sky. Tin roof sounds alarm and wake up, child. Let this be a warning, says the magpie to the morning. Don't let this fade in summer pass you by. Don't let this fade in summer pass you by. Your voice. Um, that amazing voice. Uh, at what age did you realize you had like a force of nature, um, you know, in your chest? Um, I I never thought of it that way. I I more just realized that I had such a strong desire to do it because it felt so good. It's a very athletic feeling. It's kind of like you get the pleasure of the runner's high without having to run, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> You have this old farmhouse in Vermont, and you recorded parts of the album in there. In the barn, yeah. And I, there are pictures of rows of pianos. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that all about? Well, I wanted a piano for the farmhouse, and there were so many free pianos on Craigslist. I thought, well, I got a whole barn. Let's see how many pianos I can get. So I got eight. And you also allowed some of the sort of natural accidents frog yes. sounds or whatever to stay yeah. on the album? Yeah, well that was the great thing about the barn is sometimes it would just really heave because it would get really windy and you could hear it and it sounded so cool and you'd be in the middle of a take and it would just feel so excellent and then there's a hay hook right above the piano that I was playing um, that had a big robin's nest in it and so you know you can't have your PA go okay hold please to the mother robin because she's going to come in and feed the babies and they freak out and it sounds really great like they're they're on the beginning of the solo in polar nettles there's just a huge group of robins freaking out do you know what was driving you to want to be a singer and would you have wanted it even if your voice was crappy um i'm sure i would have uh I don't know, I think music is, was kind of the only thing that never let me down. What do you mean by it's the only thing that never let you down? Well, I think that music is kind of a unbiased voice in the dark. You know what I mean? So no matter who you're getting along, it's kind of like your dog. No matter who you're not getting along with or if you feel like there's no one you can talk to, the benevolent voice in the dark still loves you in the same way that your dog still loves you. It's for unconditional love. To ride the bus to the outskirts of the fact that I need love. I've read you quoted as saying a lot of times, I don't write love songs. Yeah. But I knew I would live to regret that. <laughs> so this album has a lot of love songs. <laughs> it does, it does. And I'm sure that the exact reason that it does is because I said that like I knew what I was talking about. So the second you say something like you know what you're talking about, you contradict yourself basically. So Why did you feel like you didn't know how to or want to write love songs? I think because all of the songwriting that I really admire, if I were to distill it down to one thing, which would be like Cole Porter or something, everything is very timeless and it's very simple. And love songs, I think, are best when they're spoken in super simple language. And I have a really hard time writing like that. I have a hard time being simple, and I have a hard time getting excited about writing about, you know, man-woman relationship and go. I just, I don't know, maybe I don't feel worthy of those kind of songs. Um, and, <clears throat> I don't know, I just, I wanted to try to write a new kind of story. Do you feel skeptical of the notion of the pure, sugar rush, unadulterated love that is often um, extolled in traditional love songs? Not always. I mean, there are flights of fantasy that are really beautiful and really lovely. You know, they have their place and they're very important that way. I just, I just didn't feel I was good at writing those kinds of songs. And you know, I'm kind of crabby about that kind of stuff in my own life, so Oh, yeah, that's I'm what not, I was getting at. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really, I don't know. I, I often sometimes go, am I a freak? Because I'm 38 years old and I'm not married and I don't have any kids. I'm not the crazy cat lady yet, if that's what you think. But. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, Saw that look I'm, on your face. I'm 38 no. and unmarried and I have three cats, so. I don't ever want to get married in my life, ever. But it's not that I wouldn't, you know, want to be with somebody. I just don't want to do that. Did I read?
worried that you actually ran away from home? I didn't run away, but I left home at 15. That's not running away, you just left? No, no, I just left. And where did you live? I lived in Tacoma, Washington at the time. But when you left your parents' house, where you, did you? I had have a, a friend to go? whose mom let me live in her basement at that time. So that must have been pretty crappy. Yeah. It was pretty crappy. Yeah, yeah I, it was crappy. But you know, it was interesting. And at that time, you know, I, I was really uh, pretty lost, and I didn't really have a focus. And I started hanging out at this club called the Community World Theater in Tacoma and I started kind of working there and I was lucky enough to meet a group of people who had come together about music and it's gonna sound kind of creepy because it sounds like I'm setting up some kind of predatory story but I met a lot of guys who were in their 30s who took me under their wing and I learned so much from all those people. Became a surrogate family in a way? Yeah and uh, you know that's kind of what got me out of that whole situation. And then, like, since, you know, earlier I was saying music was the only thing that never let me down, um, I just continued kind of clinging to the coat of music everywhere I went. It seemed to be a safe thing to do.